Hey guys, so here we are. We're going live with Tina Martini. I hope you can hear me. So she's going to give you some wonderful recipes. So let me explain a little bit who Tina is. So Tina uh, is someone who is amazing. I, I met her um, maybe about nine months ago on uh, Instagram and we decided to do this, um, this wonderful yoga uh, idea together. Now, as you, if you've been following, then you'll know uh, that Tina Martini, she's called the medicine chef. Now, what do we mean by the medicine chef? So in fact, she has a doctor in a new Can't find another one. I'll find it afterwards. But she is so well known. She's worked with many uh, celebrities to help them get back in shape, to help them eat correctly. Uh, she's worked with the men's soccer team, volley team. Um, she's worked with so many different sports people. All right. Um, what I wanted to show you. So this is what I work with her with. She works with people who have late stage stage cancer or so advanced diabetes. Uh, heart disease, um, pulmonary fibrosis. She works with people in so many different areas who are at the late stage when the doctors say, you've got six weeks to live, go home. She helps them heal from inside out through healthy nutrition, okay? So you understand that Tina, her, her neuropathic, that's the word I'm looking for, neuropathy and uh, nutrition doctora, really explains to people what they should be eating what it does to the body, exactly to understand what your body needs, what time of year to fight against disease, etc. So she is really the medicine star chef. So we're going to bring her on very shortly and just after this. If you can still hear me. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, fitness lovers. Good morning, Sass. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Good morning. Saturday morning. Happy Saturday morning. And over here, it's 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me drop this down and see if we can arrange the camera a little better. Okay. So we can see uh, the bus. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm just going to follow her along because I, I haven't got the ingredients today, but I will get them and follow along after this. So I'm going to be commenting a little bit just on the side. I'll okay. let you take over and oops, let me get the camera. Oops, not that way. I'll let you take over and do your show. Oh, how about inverse this? So that you have the okay, screen. here goes the Logitech's coming on now. Here comes the. Uh, Technology. Oh, it's not working. Okay. There we go. I'm back. I can see you. Okay. For some reason, the Logitech isn't going to work with the laptop. Doesn't matter. So let me just use the laptop. Doesn't matter. You, you, you take over. We can hear you. We can see you very well. Okay. Okay, you just have to bend your head a little bit to talk to the camera, that's all. Okay, well, that looks yum, yummy, yummy. Good morning. Good morning, good Everybody morning. With us? Okay, so in honor of World Vegan Day, food and fitness lovers, we're going to do portobello fajitas. Everybody seems to love Mexican food. Let me come down here so you can see my face. So the mushroom is indeed magical. And being the medicine chef, I've put lots of time in looking at what mushrooms do for us. So we're going to use the meat of the mushroom today. And uh, that is the portobello. So I've got portobello right here. And I'm just going to show you that the gills, if you can see now, I've had it in the refrigerator, so it got a little bit darker. But the gills are really clean, and they're all connected from stem to the edge. And the mushroom is basically, you know, very perfect looking and all that kind of thing. 
So that's what we're looking for is tight gills and nice clean looking mushrooms. And I've got a damp cloth and I'm just gonna wipe it. Now mushrooms are little sponges. And so if you put them in water, you're gonna absorb all that and then that's gonna come out in your pan. So you don't want that. So we're just gonna take a damp cloth and we're just going to um, take off any residual dirt or anything like that. All right, so I just dumped my spices over. Uh, let's go ahead and take the stems out. And then we'll take the gill out with a spoon. So I've got a spoon here. And I'm just going to clean the gills out. And that way we won't have any kind of slimy. These get slimy if they get hot. So we're going to just take all that out and I'll throw that away. All right. So that's clean good enough there. And we've got our stems. Let's do our other one. All right. So mushrooms create enzymes in the human body when we eat them. And those enzymes fight cancer and other diseases. Very powerful. Very powerful medicine. All right, so we've got our mushrooms cleaned and I'm just gonna take this mess off the board. There's something called macrophages that are created when we eat mushrooms and they seek out mutated cells. And so nature's wisdom helps us to know what's going wrong in the body and then our immune system will jump in and the food will help assist the immune system jumping in and then that is how we can get well with food. All right, now I've got a cheap little knife here. It's a vegetable knife and you can, yeah, look out Sass, I'm getting the sharp weapons out. Uh, you can buy this knife at Smart and Final and it is very inexpensive, but it is my favorite knife in my case. I've got knives that are as much as $500 in my case. And this little cheapy is my favorite. It breaks down vegetables like nobody's business. So how do we hold our knife, Chef? We're, do you have a, a question, Sass? Oh, you're going to pick up. You Go said mushrooms, mushrooms are good for um, to treat against cancer. Is it all mushrooms or one type? No, it's all mushrooms. Some are more powerful than others. Now, that's a great question because there's a class of mushrooms that are considered food, like the portobello, like the shiitake, the button, that kind of thing. And then there's a class of mushrooms that are considered medicine. And they should only be compounded by an oriental medical doctor that's trained in doing that. So some people, uh, you know, really like the reishi tea and drink the reishi mushroom tea. It's connected to longevity. But remember, guys, reishi knocks down as much as 25% of your free-flowing testosterone, and that's not something we want to do. So there's time and a place for everything, and it's getting a qualified practitioner to help you make those kinds of decisions. Please just don't go into the health food aisle and start buying every powder and potion. You're going to end up doing yourself more harm than good. All right, so I'm back to the chopping now. So we're gonna pinch our blade and we're gonna wrap our fingers around the handle and that's gonna give us the most control. So let's go ahead and just run the knife through. Now I'm gonna make these just a little thicker than my peppers, okay? The mushrooms, we want them to break down and release their liquid and this doesn't really have to do that. So we want to make these just a little thicker than our veg. And so we've got one mushroom done there. I'm just going to move this spice rub that I spilled off. Messy chef. That's okay. It's more fun that way. And then we're just going to run the knife through. Now it's the motion of the ocean. We just flow the knife right through the food effortlessly. All right. Let's make our marinade now, chefs. So all kinds of medicine in the marinade. We're going to start with lemon and lime. And these, you know, look like, hey, they're just lemon and lime, but there's a lot of medicine here, and it's called limonene. Now, the majority of the limonene is in the pith, the white part, 
and we don't normally eat that. Well, that's where a lot of the medicine is. Limonene is the secret to the Mediterranean longevity. And everyone says the Medi diet is the most healthy as far as research goes. We know that pretty much to be true. So the longevity that's connected with the Medi diet or the Mediterranean diet is based a lot on limonene and you find that in citrus. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my uh, lemon open. Now, if you don't like lemon or you don't like lime, you just use all of one. You don't have to use both and remove my whip. So you see the pith in there and that's where the magic is. We're not gonna use a lot of that today because it does make your recipe bitter. So we have to figure out other ways to get the limonene in. And one of the ways is to just grind the whole lemon down and use it to make desserts in and of itself. The Italians cut the lemons up and put them in the food processor with heavy cream and a little bit of honey and they whip that up and that's how they get their limonene, and it's also a lovely dessert. All right, so I'm putting lemon in, and the squeezy thing, this is confusing for some people. The cut side goes down on the hole so the liquid can come out, and I'm just gonna squeeze that, and we're all good to go. Use your garbage bowl or use your trash can next to you like I have, and then we're gonna do some zest just to brighten the flavor. So I've got my zester over here, and the zest, of course, is just the colored part and all kinds of bioflavonoids here. Bioflavonoids turn back the aging clock, chefs. So we really love the bioflavonoids. Now I'm just going to do, you know, a half a teaspoon or so. And if you don't want zest in, you don't put zest in. You're just going to put your own twist on the recipe. All right, there we go with that. And let's whisk that up. All right, so we've got our juices. I'm gonna give just a little bit of salt and pepper. We wanna season everything well, and then let's go ahead and break down a clove of garlic. Everybody knows the magic that is held in garlic. And it's true, uh, quercetin in garlic removes trauma from the body. And garlic is part of the allium compound family, like our onions. Allium compounds are one of the best ways to stop the growth of cancer. And uh, many people have taken allium compounds like garlic and onion, mixed it with raw honey and a little bit of lemon juice, and you drink as much of that each day as you can. And uh, it has taken away things like melanoma. So we really know the truth about the allium families. Now, what else is allium? Well, we're going to be using some green onions today. Green onions are in the allium family. And we've got some purple and some brown onion or yellow onion. All right, so I smash the clove and I'm just gonna run my knife through and mince it up. And if you want it even finer, chefs, you're just gonna drag the side of the knife and make more of a paste-like with the garlic. But I'm just gonna chop it up here. And again, we're just flavoring the mushrooms and then we're gonna use the remainder of the marinade in the pan, gonna kind of deglaze the pan with it and pick up all the yummy flavorings. All right, so I've got the garlic in, the lime, uh, the lime zest, I've got some salt and pepper. Now, if you like it hot and spicy, I've got jalapeno here. And that is capsaicin, of course, and a lot of vitamin C. Now, capsaicin is the cure for arthritis, and they're really working on that. I worked on a team years ago that won the Nobel Prize for their work with arthritis, and that is um, coming from capsaicin or the chilies. Now, if you like it really hot and spicy, I've got some dry chili our bowl, and these are really kind of spicy and fiery. And uh, you could put your grapeseed oil in your saute pan, and then just infuse the oil with the chili our bowl, and that will give you a fiery base. And you'll have a little bit more spice, a little bit more capsaicin for your joints, and some more vitamin C. So that's great. All right, so we've got that. I'm going to add just a little bit of grapeseed oil. Now, grapeseed oil is the only oil we know of that actually removes plaque from the arteries. So they used to call me when I was working in Vegas, they called me the grapeseed girl. And uh, that's because I love all things grapeseed, grapeseed extract. It's all anti-aging. 
All right, here we've got the organic tamari, and that's the gluten-free soy sauce. Our organic only on the soy, please, chefs. Genetically modified soy causes cancer, period. That's the facts. So we don't want to touch any soy that is GMO. So always organic, even with your soy sauce, please. All right, I'm going to shake that up a little bit. And then we're just going to put a tablespoon or two in. And that's going to give a really deep, rich flavor. And it's gluten-free. All right, why gluten-free? What do we care about that? Well, gluten is the protein in grains, wheat, and that kind of thing. And it's a phytoestrogen. It's been produced and overproduced so much, however, though, that the body doesn't really read it like it used to when we first were eating wheat. So too much high processes, too much mass production, and it damages the integrity of the plant. All right, so we've got our marinade here looking good. I'm just going to set this to the side now and throw our mushrooms in, chefs. Now, remember, the mushrooms are little sponges, so we don't want to leave them in the marinade too long because then they will become over marinated and it's just bitter and it's a mess. So we're just going to toss them lightly. Let me just use our spoon that we clean the gills out. And now let's go ahead and prep our veg and get ready to cook. So I've got a nice plate prepared here. And I'm sorry, the lighting's not better. We've got red bell pepper, orange bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, and we've got some julienne carrots. Do you have a question, Sass? How's everything looking? No questions. I thought they looked very, very delicious. How long will you leave the mushrooms to set in the marinade? Oh, I'm just going to leave them in until we get the pan hot, like three minutes at the most. We're not going to over marinate at all. Okay. I'm, and what I'm doing is I'm peeling my carrot. I like carrot in my fajita because it gives another level of crunch. It gives more delicious medicine. And, of, of course, we love the rainbow colors. So let me just clean my knife blade off. And then we're going to break down the ends of the carrot. And then put your pieces of veg into small manageable pieces, okay? So break the veg down. And let's go ahead and take a little foot off carefully. And that way the carrot won't roll around. And we can just park the tip of the knife. Park the tip of the knife. And then you've got nice flats here that are your perfect size for julienne. And then we're just going to run the blade through, and you've got your perfect little juliennes. All right, so we've got carrot done. Here's the bell pepper. And what I like to do is I just pull the seed and the stem right out of the top. I run the knife right through the center. And then, again, we've got pith. And... We know that makes the recipe bitter, so we want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to run the knife along the pith and take that out. And let's clean up any messy kind of edges. We're not doing fine dining today, chef, so we're not really worried about all the perfection of everything. Fine dining is really about the details. And what I tell young chefs coming up underneath me is... Cooking is a team sport, and fine food is in the details. So we definitely want to pay attention if we're wanting to really do the show-stopping presentation. But if we're just cooking home family and that kind of thing, then let's just let it be rustic and beautiful the way it is. All right, yellow, red, and orange tell us the president, president's presence excuse me, of beta-carotene. And what those bright colors do is they set off the immune system and the body creates vitamin A. Now, the substrate or the byproduct of the vitamin A and the beta carotene is something called abscisic acid. Abscisic acid kills cancer on contact. That's why when we're in treatment or we're fighting disease or building our immune system in general, we definitely want to make sure that we have all the bright oranges, reds, yellows. It's all great. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the pan moving. I'm going to turn the camera so that you can see the pan. Can you turn the camera, please? Thank you. 
All right, so grapeseed oil. Now, if you're not using oils and you're doing more of a whole food plant-based program, then you can put in a little bit of veg broth. You could put in a little bit of water. Or you could even drop in a little bit of the tamari. Let's kick up the fire. And we like lots of BT. Don't be afraid of the fire. Get the pan moving, chefs, and then adjust the flame after that. All right, I've got one more thing that I want to add to our vegetable mix, and this is a poblano or pasilla. And I love this in the fajitas. And you see me roast them all the time on my Insta story. I love these roasted. And they make a great sauce as well. Sorry, Tina, that. What is, that? is that not bell pepper? A green bell pepper? No, nope, it's a pasilla. It's a poblano. And they are beautiful fire roasted. They make a great green salsa or a chili verde. They're just beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and just run the knife right through the center. And I'm going to pull the seeds and the stem out like we did with our bell pepper. And then I'm just going to lay that open and start stripping it out. So we've got our julienne of poblano coming in with our bell peppers as well and a little bit of carrot. So you can see, you know, how gorgeous all those colors are. All right. So the oil starting to move around the pan. Let's just coat the pan. We're going to let that get going. I'm going to give the mushrooms one more little toss and you can see them in their beautiful marinade. Now we're going to use the rest of the marinade as well, chefs. So our little magic mushrooms are in here doing their thing with their garlic and all the lime juice and all that good medicine. And then let's go ahead and put some of our seasonings in the marinade and we're also going to season the veg with it. So we've got a basic California blend chili powder. You buy that at any grocery store. Now, the thing about spices and herbs is that they come from other countries that aren't regulated like our country. So we can be exposed to some lead. So I do uh, really like to use organic companies like Spice Hunter, Frontier, all of those companies are really careful at meeting the standards with the exposure of lead and that kind of thing. All right, so we've got our cumin, we've got smoked paprika. Now, if you don't like smoke, just use regular paprika because it gives that gorgeous color. Now, these are all Mother Nature's antibiotics. Spices like these stop bacteria from adhering to mucal tissue. All right, so I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon or so on our mushrooms. And let's see how quickly our pan is moving here. Looks like the oil is just about to smoke. So when you come to that smoke point, let's go ahead and put the hard veg in. I've got all my julienne stuff, and you hear that sizzle? Woo! That pan is moving. I've got a high heat spatula here. And those colors are just gorgeous. Yep, we're really cooking this morning, chefs. All right, a little less and p going down. Always want to create layer upon layer of flavor. And that's your job as the chef. You're going to create layer upon layer of flavor. And so we know that mushrooms, they've got a nice earthy kind of meaty flavor to them. And that's great. But we want to enhance that as much as we can as well. All right, so I'm going to switch over to a metal spat now. And you can get fancy and just toss your veg if you want. Get real chefy on your family. All right, so I've got some oregano here, and I'm going to use that in the heat of my hand. So I'm actually holding the oregano, letting it heat up. Now, oregano is really great for knees. Isn't that funny? Oregano oil is one of the best things for knees, and we don't really know why. Sesame seeds seeds are great for knees as well. So healthy knees with our, uh, I'm using Mexican oregano, but any oregano will work. All right, so you see the veg start to kind of wilt a little bit. And that's what we want. We hear that pan moving. Now I'm going to go ahead and toss the mushrooms and remove them. Where's my tongs? Now, you notice, chefs, I've got everything right here where I'm working. 
This is your pyramid of power. Chefs take the fewest steps possible in the kitchen. So everything, including our pans, our cookware, our tools, are within reach. We want to take the fewest steps possible. All right, let's go ahead and add our mushrooms now to the pan. And I've got a little bit of marinade left in. Well, like the great Emerald Lagasse used to say all the time, I wish we had smell-o-vision. I wish oh, you could smell right. the beautiful oh, aromas. Seth, do we have any uh, questions from our, our chefs joining us this morning? Yeah, the chefs are picking them up. You just all sleeping. <laughs> okay. They're just mesmerized by all the great... Great colors going on. All right, what else do we have to do here? I'm going to go ahead and let this go for just a minute. And you see everything starting to kind of wilt. And the colors get a little brighter. Everything's coated with the delicious marinade that we made. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with just another little pinch of S&P. All right. So we've got Mother Nature's antibiotics to prevent bacteria. We've got jalapeno and other chilies going in to keep the joints supple and youthful. We've got all the magic happening in the portobello mushrooms, the macrophages that go through the bloodstream and look for mutated cells and eradicate them. We don't want any mutations going on. All right, let's go ahead and see how the pan's doing. We've got all the beautiful colors with all, all the phytonutrients. Beta carotene. I love the that it really works on the cancer. It really stops the mutation. Because the difference with what you do and what classical doctors, medicine does, is they treat the symptoms of what exists. And you treat going back to stop the body from producing the cancer again through healthy eating. That makes the whole difference. It's all there, right, on the earth. It really does, Sass. You're right. We, uh, as a naturopath, I'm trained to go to the root of the challenge. We don't deal with symptoms at all. We want to alleviate pain and alleviate symptoms and help the client to get in a better mental space uh, the first thing I do when I come into someone's home or work with someone is to eradicate pain. We can't think. We can't get connected if we're in pain. So we want to get ourselves energized and really with a clear mind, because that's, as you know, Miss Destiny Tuning, the expert cancer mindset coach, it all starts here. That's right. Yeah. And one of my favorite sayings is that old Russian saying that I use a lot. The mind is capable of having a conversation with the body, which results in death. We don't want to converse from here to here and not send good, powerful messages. All right. So we've got some caramelization happening, that nice browning. And like the great and uh, she's uh, one of the Food Network with the spiky blonde hair. She always says, brown food tastes good. So we want to caramelize the peppers and caramelize the mushrooms. And we're doing that. Now, chefs, don't be afraid. We're going to turn up the heat now. We're really going to crank some BTUs. I've got that fire on high. And we're going to deglaze the pan and get some further caramelization on our vegetables and our mushrooms. And here goes the rest of the marinade. Fancy for marinade. You're in marinade. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, so let's go ahead with more of our spice rub. Now, I have a question. Go ahead, Sass. We have a question. So somebody has said, I don't do well with spicy. Is there something else that I could use that's not so hot? Oh, absolutely. Why don't you just go for things like garlic and just a mild California chili powder blend. There is no heat. It's beautiful color. And also the regular paprika would be perfect for you. It will give the color. It will give the flavor. You're still getting a little bit of that chili medicine, but without the heat. So great question. Yes. Let's go to a mild chili blend. Now, what I started to say, Sass, is in the culinary world, 
I'm known as an aggressive seasoner. I like big, bold flavors. So you will see that I really use a lot of herbs, a lot of spices in large amounts. You go ahead and cut that down in half and build from there. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yes. That was from Pam uh, Skate. Go ahead. That was from Pam Skate. Oh, okay, great. All right. Hi, Pam. This is your recipe. Pam is a very healthy, beautiful, hardworking lady. And uh, she is really a great cook as well. And she wanted to know something creative with portobello. So, Pam, I hope you like the fajitas. They are smelling amazing. And I think Rick, Kevin, and Shauna will love them too. All right, how's this looking? Chefs, can you see all that beautiful glaze? The pan is dry, and that's what we want. We don't want a bunch of liquid. And I don't know about you, chefs, but I don't like floppy, sloppy food. I like things to have texture, crispness. I like soft and hard together. So we want to have our nice, wonderful tortilla perhaps i've got some gluten-free tortillas today and i've also got some artisanal corn tortillas non-gmo with the corn for sure and i'm just going to heat these over the live fire now you go ahead and use a pan chefs if you feel more comfortable but i always like a little char on my tortillas so i'm going to go ahead and throw a couple down and let's go ahead and take it to the plate all right, these look and smell amazing. I'm going to set them over to the side and look at the rainbow of color. And now I'm going to turn this fire down and I'm just going to go ahead and heat my tortillas. Where's my tongs? Here we are. And I'm just going to put just a little char on that. And that brings up the corn flavor, of course. Now, genetically modified corn is not a good situation, so we don't want to ever do that. We always want organic corn. If there's corn oil in our food of any kind, we want to make sure that it's organic. I'm throwing down a gluten-free. Okay. Yes, you can see that Pam has said, I can't wait to try this out. I'm hungry now, and I haven't even had breakfast. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, we're ready to make up a margarita and get, get it to the plate. All right, so you can see I put char on my tortillas. We're going to kill the live fire now, chefs. And let's go ahead and bring our pan back. Now, I've got a beautiful plate here. And I'm going to just fill with my fajitas. All right, so we've got all the great vitamin C all the great protein and amino acids from the mushrooms. Now, that's another thing, is where do vegans get their protein? That's the number one question I receive. And the truth of the matter is, is that the person that knows about nutrition doesn't ask about protein. They ask about amino acids. Amino acids, there's 28 of them that make up complete protein. And I'm telling you, food and fitness lovers, Protein is the most misunderstood macronutrient in the human body. 28 amino acids, 19 your body makes without any help from you at all. There's only nine essential amino acids, and we get those through the food we eat. Now, when we're under five and over 80, we use histidine. Between five and 80, we don't use histidine at this time. So you only need to get eight essential amino acids in your mouth, and then your body will put it together. Now, there's different types of protein sass, and most people don't realize that. When we're walking through a parking lot dark at night, and somebody comes up and tries to mug us, that is fight or flight. That is stress. That's right. So the body is going to start pulling from the protein store so you don't have a heart attack. That's the way the body protects you from immediate stress and trauma. So it'll start pulling the protein from the protein stores. 
we're in line at the carnival and we're getting ready to go on the biggest roller coaster ever. That too is a type of stress, but it's fun stress in our minds. And so our body therefore will start pulling from different protein stores to help us endure the fun and laugh. So you see that the body knows how to protect us no matter what situation we're in. It's just us getting all of the different wide varieties of fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, and then the body will do what it needs at the time it needs it. All right, so I've got a little fresh salsa. I've got some radish and some green onion, and I'm just going to sprinkle that over. And that makes for a beautiful accoutrement. Look at how gorgeous. Radishes are very high in isothiocyanates and thiocyanates. And those two, just like the mushrooms, make the catalytic action in the body for the cancer-fighting enzymes and disease-fighting enzymes. All right, so you can see how beautiful the plate is. I've got a little salsa here. Let's cut the avocado open. Now, when I worked at the Livingston Foundation, one of the top cancer clinics in the world, we used to say, I'll have a little lunch with my avocado. And that's because the avocado is one of the highest sources of what, chefs? Abscisic acid, the big cancer fighter. Now, avocado is one of the only things we cut while holding in our hand. So we want to set the blade right down on top of the seed. And holding carefully, we go around the seed. What's the number one food that sends restaurant staff to the hospital? Cutting a bagel. So we want to be careful when we're holding things in the palm of our hand. Our guacamole would be great here. I'm just going to do a little bit of the avocado dices. And we'll just put that right over the top. And I'm going to season it with a little S&P. And chefs, here we go with our magic mushroom portobello fajitas. I'm so happy you joined me this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you next Saturday for gluten-free baking. Kathy, my Italiana Bella, if you're going to join us, we're going to do the chocolate chunk with orange glazed scones next Saturday. Big requested recipe. Oh, Sass is going to post this. I sure appreciate you being here. I'm Tina Martini, the medicine chef, and here's to your radiant health. Woo! Thank you, Tina. Amazing. In 30 minutes, we'll be 30 minutes. So next Saturday, same time, same place for some more yummy, yummy recipes. Cannot wait, Tina, to really uh, taste this, to try it. I need to try it. I need to do it next week for you. Okay? Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Dance with me. Thank you so much. Bye, food and fitness lovers. See you next Saturday. Woo! -hoo! Here's to your health.